my church family, I love you all so much. You have shown, shown such support, overwhelming support. During this difficult time, you're the best. My mom passed away yesterday morning. All of us, and I, we're going to go back, this is Wednesday. Um, she was a fighter after being up for more than 48 hours. Then this morning, morning Roger, tell everybody hello for me and that everything is going as good as it can. This is the first time in about 20 years that we've all been together. We've really enjoyed each other's company. Even though it's been hard to let our mother go, there has been a lot of memories, laughter, and that has been shared. I miss everyone there. Wish I was there with you all this morning. Please continue to pray for all here. You are all in our my prayers from here. See you all soon. Thank you for allowing me this time. God bless. So about 10 days ago, Bob asked me if I would speak today, and I want to tell you that I, I really enjoy doing this, bringing you a message. Um, I, I started preparing, and it is amazing to me how God interferes in your thoughts as you're preparing a message like this today. I ask, and I receive. And I hope that today you will open your hearts and your minds to the message that was given to me to give to you. So today we're going to talk about a subject that we hear about quite often. We all have done it. We all do it probably today. But I, want, I would like for you really to think about this and open your minds. Let the Holy Spirit come within your heart. We often hear the term, it's like right here, a term called holding a grudge. Holding a grudge. So think about holding this grudge. What is a grudge? What does it look like? How does one hold it? How do you hold this grudge? Grudge is an actual word, and its dictionary meaning is a feeling of resentment or ill will over some grievance to harbor resentment. So you got this grudge, and you're holding it right here. Now we're going to talk about what it does. To hold a grudge, to hold or carry a grudge would then mean holding on to or carrying around a feeling of resentment over some grievance. This seems to be very unfortunate and burdensome way to live. The word itself even has a negative sound to it. I'd like for you to say it with me. Grudge. Let's try it again. Grudge. Now just think about that word. Don't you hear the grr and the edge? To me that sounds like the beginning of a growl. Grr. And the ending, edge. To me, that's to me that sounds like something heavy that won't budge. Here it is. You're holding it. You can't push it. You can't what are you gonna do with it? So we're gonna go over how to get rid of that. A grudge is not actual physical thing that can be picked up, carried, or visibly seen. But it is something that is carried internally. It is real, it is heavy, and affects and the effects of carrying it internally can be seen out, outwardly. In our actions toward others and ourselves. It can cause great harm to us and others physically and mentally. And though it is not tangible, it can grow. It become bigger 
and at times it can completely rob our lives of certain things. I recently went through this. I had somebody really do me wrong. And I've had it before. But I also learned that for, through forgiveness, I had two choices. Forgiveness was my first. Second was today's message about bread. And they intertwine so much that I, I wanted to talk about what really creates and what we can do about it. We are warned against grudging in several scriptures throughout the Bible, but for this morning, God has led me to Ephesians 4, 31 through 32. That's Ephesians 31 through 32. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling. I find the word brawling, I go, what's that mean? It means fight or quarrel in a rough or noisy way. Slander. Among every form of malice, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. The scriptures are speaking of grudges and they are telling us to simply get rid of them and have a forgiving heart to others. This sounds so easy, doesn't it? Just stop. Don't do it. Move on. Forget about it. The question is, can we? Can we really do that? We must, if we want to get rid of our grudges, if we are to live productive lives. I do believe all of us want to have a rich life with Jesus, don't we? Have you ever been robbed? Has someone ever stolen something from you that you worked hard to obtain? If so... I'm sure you didn't sit back and allow someone to rob you, but it happened, didn't it? Church, this is what happens when we allow grudges to do with us as well. When we hold on to a grudge, we are sitting back and allowing that grudge to rob us. How does it rob us? It robs us of our joy. If you really want to be happy and have joy in your life, don't hold grudges. This was hard for me. But I will assure you, you're going to be a lot better off and you're going to feel a lot better if you get rid of them. Because I recently had to do it. When you are holding a grudge, the hate that you are experiencing inside of you can steal the joy out of your life. It's pretty hard to be happy when all that's on your mind is the wrong that someone has done to you. Isn't that true? I'm going to give you an illustration. There will be a couple of them. We're going we're gonna to work through this. And I'll read you as it is written. Last week, Stacy and I were blessed with a gift card to Red Lobster from some friends from the Revival Fire Ministries. Did you know that they have a special going on right now? It's called the Endless Shrimp Special. I had to get it. I had to get in on this fantastic deal, so I ordered it, but soon found out that their Endless Shrimp had pretty much ended. They started you off with a small portion of shrimp. And then, once you finished it, you tell your waiter, send me out some more. But the time it takes, it took to receive more shrimp was absurd. I was, it was taking more than 15 minutes between orders just to receive an extremely small portion of shrimp. This bothered me so much that all I could do was think about even when my shrimp did arrive, 
was how long it took to get it and how upset I was. I couldn't enjoy my food because I was holding on to a grudge, thinking to myself how they really should have changed the name from endless shrimp to endless wait time to get your endless shrimp. I allowed, I allowed the thief named Grudge to rob me of the joy of a blessing of a gift card from my friends. My entire meal was ruined because I allowed it to be. And you know what? The thief named Grudge not only stole my joy at Red Lobster, but it became an accomp I became an accomplice of his thievery. I am sure that my complaining about it affected Stacy's meal as well and took her joy away. Ephesians 4.29, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit the, those who listen. Holding on to a grudge will also affect others around us that are innocent of having anything to do with it all. In my particular case, it was Stacy. The thief named Grudge can rob us and other joys, and it can also rob us of our time. When you hold a grudge, you have to put energy into it. You have to keep on returning to the memory and feeding your resentment. Although your feelings may be perfectly justified, this process, process never gets anywhere. And it simply robs your life of time. Isn't that just how a grudge robs us of our time? Sometimes, brothers, you, but instead of moving forward, you simply hold on to, you hold on to it for dear life and you're not willing to let it go. I wonder how many of us are how many of us are like that with things of the church. How many of us have allowed a grudge to steal what truly matters here in our church? As some of the small simple things that has nothing in the world to do with praising Jesus affect you? Has it taken your time and zapped your energy in serving God? Have you replaced your time of worship, praise, and mediation to God with a grudge that you just can't seem to let go? Not forgiving, not holding a grudge can be tragic, like this next illustration that I'm going to give you. There was a merchant who had identical twin sons. The boys worked for their father in the department store he owned, and when he died, they took over the store. Everything went well until the day a dollar bill disappeared. One dollar. One of the brothers had left the bill on the cash register and walked outside with a customer. When he returned, the money was gone. He asked his brother, did you see that dollar bill on the cash register? His brother replied that he had not. But the young man kept probing and questioning. He would not leave it alone. He said to him, dollar bills just don't get up and walk away. Surely you must have seen it. There was a subtle accusation in his voice. Tippers began to rise. Resentment set in. Before long, a deep bitterness divided these young men. They refused to speak to each other. They finally decided they could no longer work together. And a dividing wall was built down the center of the store. They finally decided, uh, let's see here, for 20 years, hostility and bitterness grew spreading to their families and to their communities. 
Then one day, a man in a car stopped in front of this store. He walked in and asked the clerk, how long have you been here? The clerk replied that he'd been there all of his life. The customer said, I must share something with you. Twenty years ago, I was riding the rails and came into the town in a boxcar. I hadn't eaten for three days. I came into the store from the back door and saw a dollar bill on the cash register. I put it in my pocket and I walked out. All these years I haven't been able to forgive myself. I know it wasn't much money, but I had come back and asked for forgiveness. The stranger was amazed to see tears well up in the eyes of the middle-aged man. Would you please go next door and tell that story to the man in the, in the store, his brother. Then the man was even more amazed when he saw these two middle-aged men who looked very much alike embracing each other and weeping together, together in front of their store. After 20 years, the brokenness was mended. The wall of resentment that divided them came down. It is the little things that divide people and steal time away from their lives. Can you imagine all the special and precious moments in life that is wasted and thrown away due to the thief named Grudge. In 1 Corinthians 2.10, anyone you forgive, I will forgive. And what I have forgiven, if there was anything to forgive, I have forgiven in the sight of Christ for your sake. 1 Corinthians 2.11, in order that Satan might not outwit us, for we are not aware of his schemes. Paul says that forgiving each other is important. If we don't, Satan can get a foothold. Forgiveness is hard, but not forgiving leads to hurt, bitterness, bitterness angry, resentment, self-destruction. It tears up families, ruins friendships. And worst of all, it can divide up a church. I think Satan's trickiness and strong tactic, tactic is to get Christians to not forgive. And he uses grudges to do his work. It doesn't pay to keep records of wrongs or to hold grudges. Because when we do, the thief named Grudge will also create depression, rob us of our focus. Holding grudges will seriously steal your energy and prevent you from being able to fully focus on manifesting God's desire for your life. Did you know that being angry, did you know that that's a sin? Ephesians 4.26, in your anger do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. It's all right to be angry. God gave us that emotion when something's wrong, unfair happens to us or someone else. But don't sin by, by not forgiving and letting your anger take control. Things will go wrong in your life. A disappointment. Someone cuts you off. <laughs> yeah, I'm real good at that. You know, you're driving down the road and somebody cuts you off in front and you, wow, I'm going to get him, you know? Uh, someone wronged you. These things happen. You can spend your time complaining, taking your eyes off of God, or you can find a way to make things better. We need to remember all the things God has provided. Not only will we be, we'll be happier, but we will be a positive Christian example for everyone around us. What we are to do then is to be patient with one another and forgiving. When someone hurts us, we are not to hold a grudge, but we are to forgive them and drop the offense. Even if they do not pick up and acknowledge what they've done to us, 
we will still be set free because we have let it go. Letting it go means never going back, never picking it up again. We are to walk around, walk away from it, leaving it behind, never looking back at it. If we can do that, then we can go forward and let our focus back on the things God wants us to be focused on. Forgiving someone is not condoning what they did to us, but is the first step in setting, free, in setting us free from the criminal that is robbing us of our lives so, so much. Forgiveness will release healing into our lives and keep bitterness growing. From growing, excuse me. So in conclusion, if the elders would come up. We're going to finish this out, but I want you to know that you have an opportunity. And I can't think of anybody that I would know in my life that sometime didn't hold a grudge. But through these illustrations and through these messages that God has given me, you can do that, and you can do it today. And it's, and it's, not, it's not hard to do. And you shouldn't worry about anybody else in this room but yourself. So in conclusion, there is a thief named Grudge. And he comes in and out of our lives. He steals joy, time, focus, creates bitterness, resentment, and unforgiveness builds up to be a very ugly thing in our lives and can cause negative effects on our relationship as they are not pretty and not, and not things people enjoy being around. So in thinking upon all of this, it might just be a good thing to take a good look at ourselves and see if we are harboring, harboring any grudges. If we are, we should resolve to let them go. We should take these grudges right now and get rid of them. Then make it a point to say, I will not allow my life to be robbed by a grudge. We, are true, we will truly be happy for having made these choices. For if we choose to carry forgiveness in our hearts, there will be no room for any grudges to burden us down, and we will be able to walk in freedom to live a joyful, pleasant life. A Christian may carry grudges, unforgiveness in their heart for a while, but when he is confronted with the word of God on the subject, he has no option but to forgive. In if the Holy Spirit is in the heart of an individual, he will not let him dismiss, dismiss the word of God and just keep going like he never heard it. There's a good chance today you either need to grant forgiveness or you either need to receive forgiveness. You may need both. Both. The altar is a good starting place. So if you have that, and you want to, you want to get rid of it, you want to have joy, you don't want to think about it anymore, come speak with one of the elders. They'll pray with you. Come to the altar. Get rid of it. Give it to God. That's what Jesus died on the cross for. So I, I urge you, Either ask for forgiveness, get rid of this grudge, this big old thing that you're carrying around, that's stealing your life. Either come up here to the altar or do it from your chair. We're going to give you a few minutes. As Bob would say, God is good. And all the time. Listen, I, I want to thank you for letting me share message today. It was a real joy to me.
it actually helps kill me also. And, um, go out there, tell everybody you love them, bring them to church. That'll really show them that you love them. So we'll go out with prayer. Father God, we thank you for everything that you do for us. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful building that you provide us. We thank you for the freedom that we have to come to this building. Father, I, I, I want you to bless everybody here. I'd like you to, to take care of everybody all week long. Look out after them and uh, bring Bob back safely. We pray for his safe return. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.